China is uh, increasingly uh, exposed, exposed in the West for many, many reasons. The economy is a, is a very major one. And uh, so in order to do business and uh, to have a dialogue with Chinese people, we need to know about China and to know about really the stories behind the contemporary China in order to have the dialogue, understanding. So the art, historical material, is the one of the best way to understand not just the people say, but the people think, and the people don't say, but it's wisdom in their mind, in their culture, in their heart. The Chinese are born in their blood and bones and a natural tendency to adore the tradition and the culture. So after the opening of the, uh, policy for the past 30 years over that, the Chinese uh, ordinary citizens are getting a little bit better off. So they are financially available. They could collect something they really love. So it's not necessary, uh, it's some uh, uh, national campaign goal, but it's definitely out of the natural tendency and the love for Chinese arts. In Chinese the painting, there are a genre we could uh, uh, describe that similar to the genre paintings in European history, and which really started in 12th century, but uh, become very popular and uh, uh, one of the dominant uh, major genres of painting in the 15th and the 16th century. But uh, the highest, highest achievement of the genre painting was the court art in the 18th century. One example is the uh, prosperous uh, Suzhou. It's a very long, breathtaking, long hand scroll describing the vibrant uh, city life in the city and which really describing the life 
in the 18th century China.